Twin Moon Teplakok project, we are constructing two tunnels under the seabed for two lanes, highways each one. Under the seabed connecting Twin Moon with Cheplakok Airport using tunnel boring machines. Each tunnel has two sections. The first section is around 630 meters long and 17.6 meters in diameter. And for this section we have used the biggest TBM ever built. The second section, the Supsi section, is 4 kilometers in length and 40 meters in diameter. We have introduced several innovations to the tunneling field. Some of them are the use of a robotic arm under the compressed air zone, able to access the cutter head and replace the cutter discs. A new design of cutter discs to simplify the replacement process by the workers. The integration of a cooling system in the compressed air area, making the intervention under pressure more comfortable for the workers. Manned operations under compressed air using mixed gas and saturation diving techniques. From the safety point of view, all of these innovations are a big improvement. And the fact is that we had no incidents or accidents during the maintenance of the cutter heads on both TVMs. Hydrocast is a French company founded in 1977. We are specialized in underwater works, warp access works, and works in confined spaces. In Hong Kong, we are using these three fields of expertise to guarantee the maintenance of two tunnel boring machines. We support our client for the construction of the link from Tun Moon to Hong Kong Airport using saturation techniques. We bring our hyperbaric equipment and introduce our saturation knowledge and procedures. 50 trained and skilled persons are managing all of this to ensure the safety of the workers. After 11 months of continuous saturation, we are proud to take up this challenge without stopping the production of the two tunnel boring machines. In this project, we have used two tunneling boring machines, each one fitted with more than 100 cutter discs. And to ensure a continuous boring schedule, based on the geological conditions, a preventive maintenance program has been implemented. The cutter discs have been also redesigned to increase the safety by minimizing the use of heavy tools and optimizing the exposure time of the workers to the compressed air area. For managed intervention in compressed air areas, different techniques can be used. The first one is breathing compressed air. It's the most common technique used in, used in tunneling and basically air is a mix of 20% of oxygen and 80% of nitrogen. Nitrogen is an inert gas, or non-metabolic gas, and under pressure is narcotic. Therefore, it's used up to 3.5 bar. All inert gases dissolve in the human body while under pressure, and the amount of dissolved gas is based on two factors, time and pressure of exposure. That means more time or higher pressure dissolve more inert gas. To return safely to the atmospheric pressure, a slow ascent and stops at lower pressures are required to safely eliminate the dissolved inert gas. This is what we call decompression. Some exposure requires also to breathe poor oxygen before reaching the atmospheric pressure. Another technique, and it is new in this project, is breathing compressed mixed gases. This is technique is used for high pressure intervention, that means more than 3.5 bar, for safety reasons to reduce the narcotic effect of the nitrogen and the toxicity of oxygen under high pressures, helium is added to the mixture. This is what we call trimix. The decompression schedule breathing trimix requires also to breathe poor oxygen before reaching the atmospheric pressure safely. As the working area is filled with air, the use of mask breathing trimix is mandatory. This technique has been used in Twin Moon Cheplakok to carry out short intervention for inspection purposes. The last technique used is the saturation diving technique. So based on the fact that inert gas dissolves under pressure and after 12 hours of exposure at a given pressure, the human body reaches a maximum quantity of dissolved gas. It is assumed that the decompression schedule will remain the same if there is no variation of pressure. In other words, after 12 hours of exposure at a given pressure, the decompression schedule will be the same for 12 hours one day, one week, or even one month. 
This technique is used more, it's used more than 40 years in the offshore industry. It is the safest technique for long exposure under pressure. And the maintenance program in Twin Moon Cheplakok project was planned for 11 months. Therefore, we have to choose this in intervention technique. On each cycle, four to six workers have been exposed between 14 to 28 days under this technique. We have run 18 saturation cycles up to 5.8 bars. With the challenge of 11 months of ongoing saturation, safety is always the priority. As in a, any complex process, to achieve the safest result, we have to rely on three pillars. Special equipment, procedures, and qualified personnel. So, based on the equipment, both TBMs have been designed to allow the connection of the shuttle, which is a portable hyperbaric chamber carrying four workers under pressure to the cutter head, lifting devices, a special connection to the man locks, as well as all the gas supply lines have been added. Two multi-purpose vehicles have been dedicated to transport the required gas quantity and the shuttle. We built a compound on the surface at the entrance of the tunnels where we installed the saturation complex. This saturation complex is an assembly of three hyperbaric chambers. An eight-person chamber for the saturation period, a four-person chamber for the decompression period, a wet pot to connect the mentioned chambers to two shuttles, and in addition, a medical chamber with an independent connection to the shuttles in case of injured worker. This chamber is equipped with all the medical devices for advanced life support and able to conduct a surgery by a doctor under pressure. Also control panels and gas storage are located in the same compound. In addition of all of this, specific personal equipment have been also designed to allow the workers to enter and remain at the cutter head. And this is special equipment includes masks, umbilicals and communications. For any saturation operation, procedures are needed. To avoid human errors during the saturation, an operations manual is required. This manual is a rational approach for all the steps and action to conduct the operation safely. There is no room for improvisation. And all the tasks, the persons in charge, and when the task should be done, are clearly described. As an example, before allowing the shuttle transfer, to the TBM, a group of checklists should be done. The group of checklists includes different areas of the worksite. First the gases, the right amount, the correct gas, and verified at least by three analyses. The good conditions of the multi-purpose vehicles carrying the gases and the shuttle, the shuttle and the medical chamber, internally and externally, all the lifting devices and machinery on the surface and in the TBMs, the mechanical status of the TBMs, the compressors, generators, and their backups on surface and in the tunnels. The daily health check of the workers, the availability of all the teams involved, and then the communication systems, the CCTV and the gas supplies. And all, not only when the, all the checklists are done with no incidents, then the transfer is allowed by the supervisor. Okay, you can go. A permanent and direct supervision is carried out during the transfer and managed operation under pressure as well as during all the time spent in the saturation complex.
In this project, the total number of persons involved in the saturation process is around 50, including six doctors, three nurses, 12 life support technicians and supervisors, three oper hyperbaric operation supervisors, and 30 workers. All the workers have followed a familiarization program of around three months prior to the start of the tunnels to get used to the procedures and the safety rules for changing the cutter discs. With those human resources, we have been able to conduct this 18 cycle of saturation up to 5.8 bar. But with the same equipment set up, personnel and procedures, we can even conduct operation up to 12 bars.